Oh boy, I think we found us a slab. Oh yeah, we did. Come on, stay on, bud. This is a big crappie. This is a tank of a crappie. Oh man. Well, good morning to the four F's out there, my fine fellow friends and fisher people. I think that covers everyone. All right, hey, we're at pond number one. I'm gonna show you a little bit what we're using here today because I've been using this a lot the last few months. It's been working really good. So I've got my, I've just got a, there's nothing special about this reel, but it's got four pound line on it. And then I've got this set up with a double jig setup. So on the bottom, I've got a loop knot here. This is just a little tube jig. It's like maybe a 132nd ounce at the most head, little pink head. I like chartreuse, I like pink and white. Little tube jig. I've caught like 40 or 50 fish on this already. So once this wears out, I'll just put a different body on it. And then about a foot up, I've got this little, this is actually a mule head. It's a 180th ounce head. <laughs> it's really flopping around in the wind. That is awesome because a lot of times I'll get the bluegill or I'll get crappie on that upper head. But a lot of times the bigger fish like bass or crappie and sometimes a big bluegill will hit on this bottom one. So you're kind of doubling your chances of hooking up. And then only maybe one foot above that little jig, I'm gonna put my bobber. This is a small bobber, but I'll go even smaller than this. Right now a lot of fish are shallow, so this might be perfect. But I might slide this bobber, you know, a foot up. So now this little guy is just uh, two feet under. Anyway, this has just been working really well, this double jig setup. And uh, um, maybe today we'll get a double hookup on film. That would be, that would be pretty, pretty cool. So, <clears throat> but it's a beautiful day. I think we're gonna do really good. Let's see. There's only one dock on this little reservoir here. This water is pretty clear. You'd be surprised how sensitive uh, fish can be when they see you coming down a bank. It can shut them right down for a while until they calm back down again. So like any fish down that way won't have seen us, but fish right in here, they may not bite for a while because uh, a lot of them know we're here. So they saw me coming. There we go. There's our first fish. What? Oh, we got a crappie. I think we got us a nice crappie. Yes, we do. Oh boy. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Oh man. That's a beauty of a black crappie. He's got his uh, tuxedo on. <laughs> hey, there's a nice first fish. All right. Definitely going in the basket. There we go. Number two. Oh boy. I think we found us a slab. Oh yeah, we did. Come on, stay on, bud. This is a big crappie. This is a tank of a crappie. Oh man. We found us. A <laughs> Come on. Don't get off, buddy. You know what? Oh, we're going to have a good. Oh. <clears throat> Whoa, that's a toad. That's a toad of a fish. Oh, man. That's a big crappie. <clears throat> I can't feel my fingers. That's a problem when you're fishing. You can't feel your fingers. Oh, I do have a fish. I do have a fish. Okay. Well. <clears throat> okay, finally got a bluegill here. This one I switched to a little Nico. Uh, oh, what do they call this again? I don't remember what it's called. I've actually never fished with it. It's on a trout magnet head. 
stonefly, I think. It's just a really natural presentation. If they do, we'll be ready for them. Come on, Nico, work your magic for us here. Show us what you can do. Get right over here. There we go. Oh, this feels like a bigger bluegill. I think this is a big bluegill. Oh no. Oh, it's a big crappie. Wow, okay, we're still into the crappie. Great. Oh, and he grabbed, man, he grabbed up high. Look at that. So, okay, so case in point, the double jig setup, right? That's only 16 inches below that bobber. Another nice keeper. So they're, uh, they're hitting shallow. I thought that was a tank of a bluegill there for a minute, but. Even better if you ask me. Not even getting any little love taps. <clears throat> Well, except right there. See what I mean? Two pound line. I don't know what this is, but it's just fighting like a trooper. Oh, it's a big gill. Yeah, that's a, probably a keeper gill, actually. Absolutely. Yep. On the Nico. The natural presentation. Mm. Look at that. That's a big crappie. Oh. Not, oh, there we go. Maybe we got something figured out. Little gill. But again, what what fun on this little two pound line. Supernatural. Supernatural. <laughs> oh, look at that. I got one. <laughs> Ooh. Better fish, maybe? Yeah, I think this might be a crappie the way he took that down right away. Yeah, that's a crappie. You bet. You bet it's a crappie. Even crappies like the Nico. <laughs> Okie dokie. Another keeper black, tuxedo boy. Whoa. Oh man. Hey, let me show, it, show you what I'm using for my bobber. This is a Thill, T-H-I-L-L. -L. It's got a weight on the end. And I just thread it through the bottom. And you can cast really far. So I'm a... I'm a big fan of these tiny weighted bobbers and they might be just stacked up down in this bay. If we can just keep casting a long way to them, they're not going to know we're here. With as clear as the water is, that can make a big difference. I know I've said that a few times, but I can't say it enough. The fish will see you, especially if you silhouette and you walk up along the bank, you can spook fish 30, 40 feet down if they see you. I just kind of got that rig, you know, a little bit Texas rig, but the hook's exposed and the, the bait's riding upright in the water. And it just looks like a little, you know, dragonfly larvae or some sort of little insect. That's about where we got that last crappie out there. Yeah, another one. Well, another something. Something small. 
Okay, well, I think what, what I'm learning is I got to cast as far out there as I possibly can. This might be a better, better gill than I realized, actually. Oh, look at this. Species three. That's a pretty red ear. Ooh, that's a pretty fish. Mm-hmm. Nice fish. Oh, I do have one. I didn't think I had one. I think he was swimming with it for a while, actually. These aren't these aren't bad fish we're getting into here, actually. Is that another red ear? Sure is. I'll let this one go. Another red ear. Hey, what a good, what a fun time. See ya. There we go. That bobber just started moving a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm becoming a fan of this little uh, Nico stonefly here. I am becoming a fan. Honk, honk, honk. It's my goose call. Tell me what you think. <clears throat> Here we go. As soon as it hit the water, what do we have? Doesn't feel big. But who knows? Actually, that's a bigger, that's a bigger gill than I thought. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's basket worthy. A basket worthy gill. I just started fishing this pond recently. I found it last fall. And I think I've fished it like four times now. It's right down the road from one that I've been fishing heavily. Oh, that took it like a bluegill. Maybe a big gill too. Yeah, nicer one. Ooh, that's a colorful. Look at the nice colors on that fish. Look how pretty that fish is. Look at all the orange and copper colors in there. On the mule, on the mule jig. <laughs> oh man, this, this little setup is so fun to catch fish on. It is just a Darn good time. Ah, might be a key. Yeah, that's a keeper. Oh yeah, I can feel it. That one's got some <clears throat> meat on his bones. Coming home with Daddy. Uh -oh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Saddle yourself, bud. I got this little eagle claw set up, rod and reel, for I think 32 bucks at a uh, a mire, a big mire had a fishing section, and all the worms were rotten in their fridge. It stunk so bad. I told the person working they need to throw the fridge away. But for 32 bucks, this little rod and reel setup has just been amazing, so fun. Don't worry, I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with you. Oh, it's just looking at me. It's got to be laying on some eggs. This could be a epic fall, epic fail video coming up. I'm not careful.
my right knee is one bad twist or fall away from having a problem. I have to be so careful nowadays. We're gonna cross over the road here. Just for fun. Let's see what's in here. Well, we're in pond number two, right as my battery number two died. Got into this chunky little dude on my first cast I think we're gonna try to go down to that uh, to that dock oh what's this I'm not sure what this is this is something bigger something bigger for sure oh is it gonna it's either a bass or a big crappie oh it's a bass yeah yeah, not bad, but I gotta be careful on this two pound line. Is he gonna jump for us? Tell you what, this little Helger might. I'm a fan, I'm definitely a fan. Boy, I thought for a minute that might have been a big crappie. Like, not a big bass, but on two pound line, that's great. Bass number two for the day. He wasn't getting away either. You know? Good stuff. Well, I found a new, a new pond to explore now. Let's go down to that dock and see if we can just get into something. Okay, well, I think it's a gill. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We got one by the dock. I don't know why that was so important to me, <laughs> but it was. Getting bit like nobody's business, that's for sure. That's a pretty good gill, actually. Yeah, that's a beefy gill. Wow. Man. Getting bit every time, almost. Another nice, chunky gill, it looks like, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a good one. That's a good one. That's a gooder. Okay, we gotta get back to the truck, back to the other pond. You see what I'm seeing? Huh. Maybe that's why the fishing's so good in there. Pretty good looking basket of fish. We did pretty good. We're bringing home a basket with eight or nine fish in it. Uh, we got four really nice crappie. A couple of them are really good ones, like in that 11 to 11 and 12 inch range. So uh, we'll see you again. Thanks for coming along. Appreciate it.